I'm Graham Hill, and my company is called Life Edited, and we are all about small living. Our philosophy is best illustrated through, uh, visually through a quick video of our prototype apartment, which is 420 square feet. Here we go. So we believe that done right, less can truly equal more. That if we apply smart design, technology, and a little behavior change, that we can create smaller, smarter, simpler lives that allow us to live within your means financially, but also environmentally, and that these simpler lives are happier lives. So what else can this be applied to besides your home and editing down your possessions? Well, many of us have overwhelming, supersized digital lives. Besides, it used to be that just that your, the digital onslaught was all about your desk. That's where it all came at you, but when you left it, you could get away from it. Now we have connected uh, tablets and phones that chase you around 24 hours a day. They're really pervasive in other countries. They're coming here very rapidly. You guys are having 30 million new mobile subscribers every three months. And it's very clear that the computer of the future is the smartphone. It's not a laptop. It's not a desktop. So that's what it's all going to be about. With any technology, there's good and there's bad. Portable technology, Spotify is one example, 25 million songs in my pocket for 10 bucks a month. It's incredible. Almost any book you could ever want, downloaded in 30 seconds, a massive library in my hands, straight out of the Jetsons, it's space age. The world's information, anywhere there's a mobile sync signal, allowing entrepreneurs to make progress, allowing revolutions to be created. Portable technology, no doubt, is an amazing thing. Unfortunately, there's also a dark side. So it hurts your relationship with yourself. If you were an alien coming down on Earth, you'd think that we all had a strange tick, a lot of this. These devices breed fear of missing out. They allow you to see what's happening in other people's lives, and it's a curated view, and it often can appear a lot more fun, a lot cooler, a lot more beautiful. We're also able to easily post both ideas, but also pictures, and await feedback. And so this can enable our self-esteem to get tied up in approval from others. Even worse, though, is our relationship with others. These machines disconnect us from the people that are around us, and relationships are all about connection. Here's a great video that illustrates this. He's driving with a box stuck under his car. And like, who knows how long he was driving? I saw him pull out of the parking lot and turn right, and the box was still stuck under his car. So who knows how long he was driving with that box under his car. I like bet he got home, he pulled into his driveway. Out in the sky. I'm not, I'm not. Wow. You're like, this. It's not, it's not real. I don't think it's real. Oh, I don't think it's maybe real. Maybe it doesn't I see the lineup for cars? We the Empire State Building is like really close to it.
look at this picture. Social media. I think it's a little more like that. So if you wanted to design something to distract, it would be these machines. They're portable. They've got an incredible amount of information that's changing all the time. They allow you to communicate. They are built to distract. And they allow us to, allow us to multitask. And unfortunately, we're not good multitaskers. So these devices allow us to do multiple things badly. They make us terrible students. It's very clear that low grades are associated with high use of cell phones. They're also dangerous. They make us terrible drivers. It seems so innocent. I've done it myself. It seems totally manageable. It's incredibly dangerous. Texting while driving is six times more dangerous than drunk driving. So now it's all about texting and driving. When you text and drive, it's as if you have your eyes closed for the length of a football field at 60 miles an hour. So let's talk about how to get, there's obviously some great stuff, there's obviously some bad stuff. How do we get these into balance? How do we make them work for us? So first of all, I want you to take a personal inventory. There are a couple apps, one's called Checky, one is called Moment, and these can help you monitor how much you use your phone. But besides that, I want to just do, do this yourself. Just watch yourself. How often do you use your phone? How often do you use your tablet? And why? Is it because you're stressed? Is it because you're bored? Is it because it's an intimate, connected situation and you're trying to check out? Try to figure out why you use your phone. Let's talk about some tools. That's a little aggressive. An old, old school watch can be a great thing instead of using your phone because once you pull that phone out, it's a wormhole for you to fall into. So that's a good way of sort of uh, staying away from your phone. I'd suggest making the bedroom a tech-free digital oasis. Plug your phones in outside. It's proven that they're not good for your sleep. They affect your, affect your sleep patterns, so just keep them out of the bedroom. That's an easy one. Emails, calls, texts, these are fragmenting. These are cutting your time into little pieces and bothering you. So try to put them into chunks. Batch them in chunks throughout the day. And realize, if you have a lot of overload, that the more you send, the more you get. So try to send less. <laughs> one of the, probably one of the most important things that I'm going to talk about are notifications. So the way I look at a notification is it's like someone coming up to you and tapping on the shoulder. I only want that to happen if it's really important. And so turn off as many or all notifications. You don't want things that are fragmenting you and pulling you out of the present. And there are a lot of apps that do this. Use airplane mode for instant peace. Go off grid. Consider a weekly night or take off a night or a weekend or take off a whole vacation. Go tech free. Go on the offense. Take a long walk. Go on a cool camping trip. Hit the park. If you want to create good memories that stick with you, the way to do that is to be as present as possible, is to incorporate all senses, is to pay attention. And I think you'll agree with me, if you, if you think about the pictures and the videos that you may take at an event, often they're pretty crappy. And over time, as you look back at them, those are going to crowd out your actual memories. So put away the phone, get into that room, bring your attention to what's happening and really experience it instead of wasting time creating bad memories for later. If you travel for this view, take in that view. Engage with your friends. Laugh. Many religions, many self-help books all talk about the same thing. They talk about being present. So get off of that phone and get into the room. This is not intimacy or connection building. But if you consciously take out your phone and conspicuously turn it off to spend 
share a meal or spend some time with your significant other, that is. If you consciously connect with your friend, look them in the eyes and have a focused conversation, that's building something. You don't want to be, I, I don't want to be with Demetha and I'm texting my friend Shane, and then I'm with Shane and I'm texting my friend Demetha. That just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and by all means, think about your kids. Studies show that a, as use of phones goes up in the parents, kids start to act out. It's very clear. I think we need to bring back the in-between. These are those few minutes where you're standing in line, or you're going from A to B, and I think they're important. You can't be productive all the time. You need non-productive time. That's why we take breaks. That's why we take vacations. So we want to bring back the in-between. Ser it served a purpose. So when you're standing in line, look around, talk to those interesting people in front of you or behind you. When you're going from A to B, in a cab, in a bus, in a train, look outside, see how the city's changed. People watch, contemplate your navel. You want to allow yourself to zone out. You want to allow yourself to be able to daydream. We want quality over quantity. Single tasking over multitasking. Less but better. Thank you.